before this video starts, I forgot to give a thank you to our server boosters and the Discord. So, uh, thanks for doing that. Anyways, let me go and move on to the video. Actually, also, I was mentioning 4 out of 5 cards. You know, I'll just explain that later in the video. So, if you hear me use the term, like, 4 out of 5, 5 out of 5, um, just keep watching the video until I explain it. So, uh, yeah. Let's go ahead and move on. You can have the microphone, Jimmy. Hey guys, welcome back to another video of me being pretty sick. Not sick in the cool way, sick in the virus way. Anyways, this is going to be a really hard video to explain because there's a lot of factors that goes into getting cards that are good. And it's going to be hard to explain while I'm sick, but I'll try my best. So first off, we got to address some uh, little rumors people have about uh, cards. Uh, you see this Yurichi card? There's no difference between the Yurichi card and the Mitsuri card. They're both the same thing. They don't do anything different just because they're different mythic cards. It's just a different card. Look at this one. So we got this deck of card right here, right? Yeah, pretty cool. Look at the attack and health on it. 17.5, or wait, no, 100, 175,000 HP, 46,000 attack. Now look at this Naruto card. 46,000 attack, 175,000 HP. Hmm. Yeah, so it goes for all rarities. Um, obviously, legendary card is not as good as a uh, mythic card. But all legendary cards work the same, all mythic cards work the same as all the other mythic cards, and it goes on with every other rarity. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, we can go ahead and move on to which raid you should do to get cards. Now you might be wondering, you just said all the cards are the same. Yes they are, but some raids, they're easy to get cards in. Alright, so these buffs right here, right? If you have these characters and you put them on your assist or on your main, it gives you an extra 50% damage buff for each one of these characters. So, if you have a 50% or 100% damage buff on all of these, or even just one of them, you should do that raid. Because you're most likely going to do the most damage in that raid, which means you're going to get more rewards, which means you're going to get a higher chance to get a card. Wow, that's a big line of premium people. Anyways, there's also a Monkey Titan card. It has a 0.05% higher chance to drop a card in it than all the other raids. Also, I dropped a Maneuver Gear earlier and I forgot to check it. Uh, it was one of these two, so they're not good. So if you don't have any damage buffs like the 50% damage buffs here, then you could just do this raid because it has a higher chance of dropping cards. Now, would I advise doing this raid? Not really, because you do actually need your Ichi, so do his raid instead. Alright, so the next segment is, how do you tell if a card is even good? Well, first off, let's start with the basic, most basic thing about cards. If this is legendary right here, which it will be orange if it's legendary, that means the stat is higher, which means the higher, the better, the more damage you're gonna do. Unless it's an HP stat, then you just get more HP. Now, a lot of people... A lot of things people don't understand is blue and orange are basically the same thing. Most of the time, the difference between an orange and a blue stat is like 0 0.3. Unless you're talking about crit damage, 0 0.3. That's literally just nothing. So if you get a blue stat, if you get a blue stat instead of an orange stat, it just doesn't matter. Also, I'm doing a Shadow Monarch giveaway at 5,000 subscribers, which the odds are by the time you're watching this, the giveaway is already going on. Um, so yeah, thank you for 5k subscribers. This is just an early thank you. I uh, will be doing a 5k subscriber stream So probably a little bit after my next two videos come out Anyways now that we've gotten that out of the way blue and orange stats are just indicate the card is pretty good But another thing you want to understand is if you get legendary gold legendary HP legendary XP legendary damage taken all the stuff like that It just won't matter. It won't matter at all You'll get more HP, yeah. But that's not going to help with your damage. So, you want to focus on the stats that help with damage. Now, a lot of people don't get the stats that have the damage. They don't know what they are. And every time I list them, they don't understand. So, I'm just going to put it as text on the screen. So, yeah, here they all are. Uh, if you want to read it and study them, uh, even though it's like six words, you can pause the video if you want. Assist cooldown reduction. Cooldown reduction, crit chance, crit damage, and attack. Now, assist cooldown reduction just doesn't really matter until you get a uh, good assist. And good assists are... Just go watch my assist playlist, please. Just go watch that. Because I don't want to explain every assist in the game. But like you can tell, the assists I'm using...
probably gonna be some of the best assists. Uh, now that we've gotten what stats are good out of the way, which ones are the most important out of all of those? Now, even if you have really good assists, assist color reduction is the least important. Not really by that far, but it is pretty by far. Now, in my opinion, the least important out of all of them is probably crit, or not crit chance, uh, attack. Attack, uh, it kind of like just barely boosts your damage, but like it works for crits and non-crits. So, but you won't have to worry about that if you already had high crit chance. So, so let me get my maneuver gear on. Forgot I took it off. Well, I didn't know I had that. Man, where is it? Someone, someone sold it. There it is. Anyways, uh, out of all these, I'd say one of the most important, or the most important, is probably crit damage. Now, the metas change a ton if you have the new divine pet. And when I say they change a ton, I mean a ton. Assist cooldown reduction is more important than cooldown reduction, which used to be like the second or third most important stat. Now, don't get me wrong, cooldown reduction is still pretty useful, but if you're using Crystal Saber, it's not really useful. Or if you're using Milam. Milam or Crystal Saber works really well with this, uh, because they're pretty much just always activating the pet, which just gives you pretty much just always brings your cooldowns back so you're pretty much just infinitely using your moves and since you get the extra crit chance uh like the minimum crit chance you're gonna need is like i don't know like barely anything but you're pretty much always going to be hitting crits uh because of that and since you're going to be hitting crits a lot crit damage is going to help you out a lot so yeah this is what a good card would look like so now I'm going to list them in order from least important to most important without Divine Pet and then with Divine Pet. Now this also depends on if you have Crystal Saber, which if you had Divine Pet, you most likely do have Crystal Saber. So without Divine Pet, most important goes from Assist Cooldown Reduction, Attack, Crit Chance Cooldown Reduction, Crit Damage, I think. I don't know, maybe Crit Chance is above Cooldown Reduction, but I'm pretty sure that's how it goes. I'm pretty sure. So those are the most important listed. Um, now with Divine Pet, it's like uh, Crit Chance, Cooldown Reduction. By the way, these are the least important ones. Crit Chance, Cooldown Reduction, Attack, Assist Cooldown Reduction, and uh, Crit Damage. Uh, cooldown Reduction might be more important than uh, Crit Chance. I still don't know for sure. Because a lot of people are still testing metas with the pet. But uh, yeah, divine pet stats don't really matter since barely anyone has it. But uh, yeah, if you know how to which cards are good, your cards will get a lot better. So assist cooldown reduction, attack, crit chance, crit damage, cooldown reduction. Keep in mind, you know, you don't have to get all of these in legendary for them to be good. Now, this happens a lot, but if your card is like 4 out of 5... 3 out of 5, 4, or 5 out of 5, something like that, and it has crit damage on it. Um, and the crit damage is low, like 10, it can make the card bad. That's how important crit damage is. It could make the card very terrible. Now, if you're gonna get uh, high crit damage, I would recommend uh, 15 to 18 crit damage on a card or an accessory, something like that. But, oh uh, yeah. If you have like a ton of mythic cards or ton of legendary cards or anything like that, you gotta know which stats are important or else you'll be using like really bad cards. Cause I see a ton of people using 2 out of 5 cards instead of 4 out of 5 cards. Now, time to explain what 2 out of 5, 4 out of 5, 5 out of 5 and stuff like that means. Cause I forgot to explain that when I should have. I might, uh, when I'm editing this video, like, add me explaining what it is before I explain all this stuff. It including the four out of five terms but i'm still going to explain it anyway just in case i don't so you know all the important stats assist cooldown reduction cooldown reduction crit chance crit damage attack all of those count as one point on a card and there's five whole points you can get on a mythic card five so let's say you get crit chance attack and crit damage on a card that would be a three out of five card but if you get like cooldown reduction and attack on a card that's a two out of five card because those are two good stats out of five good stats you could have had. So if you get a Cisco introduction, cooldown reduction, crit chance, crit damage, and attack, that's a five out of five, which is all of the stats you need. So yeah, that pretty much explains how to get your cards to be better. Now how to get cards 
that are better in the first place. Like, if you can tell how good a card is, but how do you get the cards to come out good? When you drop them, they gotta be good, right? I hate to break the news to you. I hate to break the news to you. You can't. There's no guaranteed way to get better luck like that. Sorry. Now, there is ways that you can get cards faster than usual. Uh, but I don't really want to get into all that stuff in this video. I do have a separate video for that. I'll link it in the description. And it's in the top right corner of the screen. Also, a lot of people say my drip looks pretty bad. Yo, you gotta rate it. You gotta prove them wrong. This looks kind of clean. Rate out of 10 in the comments. Alright, now moving on. So, if you're gonna spend your raid tokens on cards, which I do not advise, I advise saving up for the new, uh, anniversary. Uh, it's gonna be here soon. But, if you ever do, or ever have to, something like that, then I'm gonna have to advise you to spend it on Deku cards. If I'm keeping on the buck here, that's not, like, 100% advice, but let me, let me, let me just show you something. Oh, hold on. Deku cards are pretty good, but they're not always good. Sometimes they turn out pretty bad. Uh, zero out of five. But uh, yeah, with some serious advice here, uh, do not buy legendary cards with the raid tokens. They're really just not worth it. Cause you could just go get those from the dimensions if you wanted. Plus, most of the raids you'll do, you'll drop a legendary card. Cause they're not, they're not really too rare, especially if you get like 40 plus rewards. Anyways, I hope this helped you do like more damage or whatever your goal was with better cards. Cause there is no proven way to just get better cards. There are cards that for some reason just get better stats, like Kokushibo cards. What the fuck? Every time I buy it or drop a Kokushibo card, it's always like four out of five for some reason. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I got more. I got more good Kokushibo cards. I'm pretty sure. Yo, what? Bro, who's letting boss rush cook, bro? Whoever's doing that, they need to hire him for raids. Who, who's letting bro cook? Anyways, yeah, I highly advise uh, buying boss rush cards because for some reason they always are good. Like, for almost always end up being at least three out of five. I don't know why. Like, uh, my whole team used to just be Kokushibo cards because, like, they were the only ones I would get good stats on. Anyways, yeah. Hopefully that helped, because uh, there is no proven way, like I said, to get your cards to have better stats besides buying boss rush cards. But uh, yeah, if you get cards, it is very nice to be able to determine which one's better and which one will be on your team, because it can increase your damage by so much. If I didn't know what you what kind of boss you have, if I didn't know what cards to use, I'd probably be using this. I'm gonna keep it a buck. My stats would be terrible. Why can I, like, halfway zoom into that rock? It's actually kind of crazy. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video where I fly to the moon and then go back a few months later because cause that's what you do. You don't stay there. Goodbye.